tip opening should I play on? This is a question I've received so many times over the years, but now that people are ordering my Better Sacks Burnin Alto Mouthpiece, it's coming up even more. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about saxophone mouthpiece tip openings in case you're trying to decide which one to get for yourself or in case you win one of these in this week's giveaway contest. Jay Metcalf here from bettersax.com. Thanks for tuning in. So great to have you here today. That's right, we're giving away not one, not two, but three Better Sax Burnin Alto Sax mouthpieces. That's a $750 value. Really? I'll tell you more about how to enter the contest in a bit, but for now I will say it's a good time to drop me one of these as that's gonna bring you a lot of good luck in this contest and future contests. And make sure you are subscribed to the channel because that brings you the most good luck. The tip opening measures the distance between the reed and the tip of the mouthpiece. There are three different systems of measurement that we use for mouthpiece tip openings. This Better Sags Burnin mouthpiece right here measures 72 one thousandths of an inch at the tip. That can also be called 1.82 millimeters or a five. While inches and millimeters remain consistent, a mouthpiece labeled a five tip opening can vary in actual measurement from one brand to another. For example, a five tip opening on a Van Doren mouthpiece will be ever so slightly larger, and a Meyer five mouthpiece tip opening will be ever so slightly smaller. Our six tip opening measures 78 one thousandths of an inch, and the seven tip opening measures 82 one thousandths of an inch. So you can see there is only about two tenths of a millimeter difference between the five and the seven, or basically a couple of hairs. The tip opening is only one out of many factors that contribute to how a mouthpiece plays and feels and responds. But with all other things being equal, here are a few general things to keep in mind. Smaller tip openings are easier to play than larger ones. This is why we start beginners out on small tip openings like threes and fours. The tip opening is the actual distance that the vibrating reed needs to travel back and forth in order to create your saxophone sound. The smaller the distance, the less energy needed to get that sound going. Smaller tip openings are also easier to play when it comes to an even timbre and intonation. That's why classical saxophone players usually play smaller tip openings because they're going for a very focused pure and controlled sound. The main drawback with a smaller tip opening is that it can't take the same volume of air as a larger tip opening can. So while this won't be much of an issue for classical styles of music or casual saxophone players, those saxophonists who want to put a lot of air through the horn might feel a little restricted with a smaller tip opening. This is why players who find themselves in very loud musical situations like playing lead alto in a big band or playing rock and other contemporary music styles will often want a larger tip opening. The strength of the reed is a measurement of its flexibility at the tip, the part that is bending back and forth against the mouthpiece. A softer reed is more flexible and therefore requires less energy to get it started vibrating, while a harder reed requires more energy or air to get the sound going. This is why as you play more open mouthpieces, you're gonna want to have softer reeds, and as you play more closed mouthpieces, you're gonna want your reeds to be harder. One thing that often trips a lot of people up when they upgrade to their first jazz mouthpiece is the tip opening is bigger, but they stick with the same reeds they were playing on the small tip opening, classical kind of beginner mouthpiece. So the result is usually, wow, this thing is so hard to play. Please make sure you get some new reeds with any new mouthpiece purchase. If you're going up in tip opening, make sure you get some softer reeds. And even if you stick with the same tip opening, it's a good idea to have some other strength reeds on hand as I said earlier, the tip opening is only one factor that contributes to how different mouthpiece designs respond. Don't make the mistake of expecting the reed that works well on your current mouthpiece to work on your new mouthpiece that is a different design. Another big misconception out there is that larger tip openings are just for advanced players and smaller tip openings are just for beginners. There are plenty of professional saxophone players who play a smaller tip opening 
Everyone is different physically and has their own unique way of playing the saxophone. So what matters most is to choose something that you're comfortable on. It's generally better to start on smaller tip openings and then gradually work your way up. How far up you go depends on you. Larger tip openings are more difficult to play because they require more air and are not as easy to control in terms of timbre and intonation. So there is a trade-off and I would say that anyone who's not putting in at least a couple hours of play time every day consistently over a long period of time should stick with the smaller tip openings. You should only move up to a larger tip opening if you're somehow feeling restricted in the amount of air you can put through your mouthpiece. If you're getting your first jazz mouthpiece and upgrading from a Yamaha 4C or whatever classical stock mouthpiece you were playing on, I recommend you start with a five tip opening. There's already a bunch of things to get used to when moving to a jazz mouthpiece, so don't make things more difficult for yourself. Many people will get a good five tip opening jazz mouthpiece and stick with that for the rest of their lives. If you already play on a five tip opening jazz mouthpiece and feel like you've got more sound in you that's not coming out, that might be a good time to move up to a six. I don't recommend people make huge leaps when changing tip openings. It's the sort of thing you wanna do very gradually. If you've been playing on a six for a while but feel like you might benefit from a slightly larger tip opening, it might be a good time to try a seven. There may also be times in your life where you want to move down in tip opening size. Lots of people find that as they get older, they can't put the same volume of air through the horn and moving to a smaller tip opening makes playing a lot easier. Sometimes people take a long break from playing the saxophone for a variety of reasons. If you're coming back after a long break, do yourself a favor and ease into it with a smaller tip opening. I'm now gonna play the same etude on all three different tip openings of the Better Sax Vernon Alto mouthpiece. I wanna show you that the sound really doesn't change all that much. It's more about comfort level and read choice, really. For each example, I chose a different read that matched well with each tip opening. So any differences in sounds you hear are more a result of the variation between the reeds than the mouthpiece itself. For this example, I found a nice number three reed, which I first tried on the six tip opening, but there it was too resistant. It worked perfectly on the five. Have a listen. <laughs> Now I'm gonna move over to the sixth tip opening. I had to find a slightly softer number three read to get a good match. And finally, here is the same etude on the seven tip opening, and here I'm using a nice two and a half strength read. found this video helpful, especially if you're looking to get a new mouthpiece but aren't sure which tip opening to choose. What's interesting to me is out of the three playing examples, I prefer the sound of the five tip opening the most, even though I normally play on a seven. In this case, it's more about getting a really good match with the reed. I could happily play on any of these tip openings. As you can hear, they are very consistent. One thing that you may find when testing different tip openings within the same family of mouthpieces is that sometimes they are very different. That's because getting consistent tip openings to all play similarly is a real challenge that takes very skilled design work and a lot of testing. Jody Espina and the team over at Jody Jazz have done an outstanding job with my mouthpieces and we are all extremely proud of how consistently they play. The Better Sax Burnin Alto mouthpiece is now available for purchase and I put a link in the description below if you'd like to pick one up for yourself. Thanks for watching. <laughs>